we're going to complete some unfinished business really quickly. Um, would one of the board members like to move to close the public hearing on the uh, Article 5? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of closing discussion on Article 5? Aye. 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 Okay. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, we're, things are a little topsy-turvy. We're going to suspend the select board meeting uh, agenda and jump into the joint meeting with our guests, the village trustees. And um, we'll do that portion, and then the select board will come back together to do the rest of their agenda after, this, uh, after the joint meeting with the trustees. So um, do you want to call your board to order? And I will call the meeting of the village trustees to order. I just have a couple intro things, and then I will hand it over to everybody. So this part of the agenda is a visit with our legislative delegation. I would like to thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your extremely busy schedules to be here and to talk with us about what we're proposing. We want to update you on our work over the last few years on um, consolidation and saving taxpayer dollars, eliminating duplication, and increasing efficiency. And um, we also want to share with you some details of our proposed merger plan, which we will vote on this November 3rd. Um, we invite you to share your thoughts about our work so far, ask questions, and, you, and any suggestions you might want us to address as we continue with our work. And um, I will introduce, well, I'll let Andrew introduce George Tyler to get started. George Tyler, our village <laughs> vice president. I thought Thanks, you might Andrew. have more Thank to you. say than that, but that's okay. Is this working? I don't want to scream at everybody, okay? There's no appropriate Thanks. I, I'm going to reiterate, I, I really appreciate all our, our uh, reps being here, state senators and reps, and uh, we understand this is the busy, maximally busy time of year for you, so <laughs> I'm going to try to rush through this. It's, it's huge detail. I'm going to try to streamline it as much as possible. Uh, so if I ramble a bit, let me know um, and try to get through it uh, as best I can. Um, so again, thanks for coming, and we're going to go to the, very, the cover slide. And uh, I am on the uh, Essex Junction, Essex uh, Select Board Governance uh, Subcommittee. Um, my uh, three other uh, partners on the subcommittee are Max Levy, uh, Andy Watts, and Raj Chawla. And uh, just to uh, address those who are keeping track of this, we are the working group that is putting the transition and the charter together. And I will make a note that I live in the village, Raj lives in the village, Ma Max lives in the town outside the village, Andy Watts lives in the town outside the village. So we have a kind of a town-village balance. That's the core nucleus of, of the group that's, that's putting the transition charter together. Hey, Andy. Oh, sure. OK. Uh, down outside the village. Next slide here. So how we got here very quickly, um, again, I want to kind of address something that I, I sort of re is reverberating through these public hearings, um, that there's this sort of e existential struggle going on between the village and the town on the select board or between the select board and the trustees. And I, for one, am kind of baffled by it, but I, I'm fascinated to hear about it. Um, but I think from our perspective, we've been working pretty closely together for the last seven years. Um, this started back in 2013. Um, when the boards met and we started talking about having uh, sharing administrative services. Uh, at that point in time, the village manager had resigned and rather than hiring a, another village manager, we had the idea of potentially having the uh, town manager also become the village manager and then slowly taking advantages uh, of people retiring or leaving and uh, growing. Um, we thought we might be able to consolidate the administrations of the town and the village into one and see where that took us. See if that might be a different approach to consolidating the village and the town or at least bringing us closer together and having better communication. So we, at that point, uh, the two boards met uh, and we all unanimously, and, and I want to make a point that at that point in time on the select board, there were four members from the town outside the village and one person on the select board who was from the village. So again, this was not the village con uh, forcing something on the town. It was all done unanimously, willingly. Um, I think if anyone had uh, raised red flags, I don't think we would have gone forward with it. Um, so we had a, a shared services report. Um, shortly after that, the town manager did become the village manager. Um, shortly after that, uh, the, fi the uh, uh, village finance director uh, became the, the finance director for the entire community, town and village. Uh, the village clerk became the uh, clerk for the town and the village. And then we uh, crossed a really big hurdle where we integrated the two public works budgets. Uh, we all drive, the reasoning was we all drive on the same roads. Uh, they all require uh, the same amount of maintenance. 
the roads don't know whether they're in the village or the town, uh, so we decided we should just consolidate their budgets and just have one bill that goes out to everybody. Um, and that was great and it's been working great ever since 2016. 2018, we hired Evan Teach, uh, our new unified manager. That was significant because he was the first manager hired as a unified village town manager. Um, Evan commenced a, an alignment process to look at uh, village and town uh, various departments, policies and procedures and started to bring them together. Um, and that's been going on and that's a great story, but again, I don't want to get too, um, into, too far into the detail. Um, and Evan, uh, under Evan, we also started meeting regularly the Board of Trustees and the Essex Select Board uh, having regular monthly meetings. And I think last year probably half of our meetings were joint meetings like the one we're having tonight. So again, the idea that we're struggling and we're forcing decisions on each other, I don't know where that's coming from and I wish, I hope we can get by that. Um, one of the things that we knew um, eventually that we would probably need to restructure the government. We knew that this probably wasn't a sustainable thing, just having a shared administration. We knew that sooner or later we were probably going to have to change the board structure. Uh, so in 2018, the two boards appointed a governance subcommittee, that's what the, I introduced earlier, uh, to begin looking at different governance models, looking at uh, doing research and seeing, uh, looking at different possibilities for changing the village and town government. All of this, would, nothing, none of this was going to be something that we were going to do on our own. We always knew uh, that it was going to have to be something that went out to the voters, but we wanted to uh, do a lot of solid research. Uh, so we'll go to the next slide here. So the governance subcommittee, um, very briefly, we reviewed over 12 local governance models. One of them included separating the village and the town. One of them included creating a city with a mayor. Um, we looked at everything. Um, we ranked all the different models. That we, had, we had 17 criteria um, that included things like impacts on public safety, equal representation, economic sustainability, ease of public partic participation and tax equity. Um, so we ranked them all, and after ranking them all and debating uh, all these different models, we decided that a unified charter model uh, would be the best approach. This would be basically, almost the idea would be dissolving the village charter and just really revising the town charter, but it would have required such a, a, an extensive revision. It also, it seemed perhaps a little bit more politically acceptable, the idea that we would just be creating a new town charter and incorporate, so that it doesn't, no one gets the impression that one party is eating up or, you know, uh, taking over the other. Uh, so that was our proposal. Um, and then shortly after that, the joint boards, uh, the trustees and the select board authorized us. They can't approve a charter, they can't approve anything like that, but they authorized the subcommittee to continue working on a unified charter. So we'll go to the next uh, slide here. Uh, the key challenges, I think this has come up before and probably from the previous, uh, the previous public hearings, we, in, we know that we have representation as a, a, a hot issue. Um, the other issue, of course, is the integrating the town and village operating budgets with, a, out an unacceptable, uh, with an unacceptable increase in the town outside the village. Um, I, I'm just going to, quick aside here, I, I know, I do agree the village does tax itself to buy water slides and we did buy ourselves a water slide. We also tax ourselves to buy the pool that the water slide is in. Um, we tax ourselves to pay for the park and the park buildings. One of those buildings now houses the Essex Town Recreation Department. Uh, we tax ourselves to pay for the sidewalks and the streets and all the other sidewalks and streets uh, in the village, along with the fire department, the library. In short, we tax ourselves to pay for all the same municipal services that other communities around uh, Chittenden County have. But the difference, of course, is that we're also town citizens and we pay taxes to the town to help pay for those services in the town. Now, you'd say, well, why doesn't the village just become independent? What, or, what, what's going on here? If we look at the total operating budget for this entire community, the town is about roughly around $15 million. Uh, the village is about $3.3 .3 million. So slightly over $18 million. If we look at our total expenditures, and you base the idea of should we separate or merge on that? Are we more joined by what we share or what separates us? And we are clearly, clearly much more joined at the hip by what we share. For example, the biggest bill is the police department. 
after that, it's the public works departments. Those are great big bills. We share those costs, okay? And so when people wonder why don't we just separate, that's part of the logic. Uh, so anyway, it, the other issue was uh, uh, designing a representative, a representative elected council model that balances different expectations and political views, and specifically voting districts versus at-large elections. And again, we've seen how contentious this is. We understood it was going to be contentious going into it. Um, and so we um, uh, decided that we just needed to do a lot of research. Uh, as an aside, one of the things that we did um, was we hired uh, Dan Richardson, who is an attorney in uh, Montpelier, who is an expert on municipal law. He advised the, the governance subcommittee. Uh, the other thing we did is that we hired Kelleher, Samets, and Voke, a marketing company in Bur uh, Burlington that has done some work for government and nonprofits. Uh, we asked them to help us design a survey. Uh, the survey to get just get a, a general sense of people's feelings about merger, people's feelings about what kind of government structure they wanted to see, people's feelings about how we might want to integrate taxes. Um, we, I, I'm going to just go a little bit more about the survey because it's, it's been controversial here. When we put the survey together, we knew we had to balance brevity with thoroughness. Okay? We couldn't ask every single permutation of every question we could think of. If we couldn't ask people to sit down and take a 45-minute or one-hour sur uh, survey, or our response rate would have gone right down. On the other hand, we wanted to get some answers to questions. So we sort of knew all along that a lot of people were going to want to send us a message through the survey. And if we didn't ask the right question, they were going to be frustrated. But unfortunately, we just had to, we had to just leave some questions out. Um, so we took the survey. Uh, and we had a great response. We had an o over 800 people of sort of just about split 50-50 between the village and the town. And so those were, uh, that was a pretty big piece of information that came back to us, informed us about what kind, about representation and uh, what, what was on people's minds. And really, um, we understood and, and we've been criticized that, well, we didn't understand the, the details of the survey. No, what we saw and we wanted to look at were trends. And one of the trends we looked at is a lot of people liked at-large voting. A lot of people wanted to see district voting. There was not one specific model that clearly was head and shoulders above, every, above everything else. Um, so next slide. So to, to go back to um, generally what we're looking at right now in the charter is besides the permanent component of the charter uh, is to have a transitional phase of the charter that will help transition from uh, our two government, two board structure into a permanent structure. For the first five years, there will be a seven member board. And this is something we're proposing and this could be revised. A uh, seven member board uh, with two town seats, two village seats and three at large seats. And it would be up to this board to develop a permanent model that, would, that could be any combination of the above. Um, also, during the first five years, uh, we would organize town and village departments, building codes, municipal plans, ordinances, and so forth. The, the slightly controversial piece of this is the, what happens in the first 12 years. Now, if you think of talking about going back to uh, incorporating the village's general fund budget into the town, if we did that all at once, Folks, the average home in the town outside the village would see something on the order of a, a 24 to 25% tax increase, which I think in any reasonable person's mind is unacceptable. So it, we had the idea of what if we start to phase this in? And this is not a new idea. Uh, when IBM decided it was no longer going to pay the town and the village a machinery and equipment tax, rather than take it out all at once, it phased it down over 14 years. It was rough. I was on the board for a lot of those years. Uh, and each year, we had to have a $120,000 bite come out of our budget. But it was far better than losing, I can remember that we were getting, the village was getting something like 2.5, and, and the town was getting about $2.8 million uh, that year. So it would have been huge. So phasing in, that was the idea that, that occurred to us, that we might be able to phase in the reconciliation of the town and the village costs over 12 years. Um, one of the things that this does is by phasing it in, it takes advantage of grand list growth. So in other words, the town and the village are both growing. Um, the more you grow, the wealthier, the larger your tax base gets, uh, the, the more the cost can get spread around. So it's not, you're, you're not hitting individual homeowners as much. And I, we can 
talk about this a little bit more. So we'll just go to the next slide here. So uh, to get to the representation piece, why a seven-member board um, with two town, two village, and three at large? First of all, it's an odd number of uh, members avoids deadlock. Second, it balances the wishes of those favoring voting districts versus those favoring at-large voting. Um, it addresses the concerns that we heard in the survey uh, that some parts of the community could be marginalized, particularly we've heard of the more rural areas of Essex. Don't, it'd be hard for them to get a representative, so it's better, we want to have a fixed, couple of fixed seats on the new merge board so we can kind of make sure that at least we get, hear some of their voice. Um, so the, the two plus two district, it also gives you, uh, make sure that you have some diversity. It, it is possible if you had all at large, you could only get all town or all village voters. So we wanted to build in some diversity in this transitional phase. Um, the three at large component, however, embodies the idea that board members represent the entire community. Um, it is, you know, we all like to say when we're elected, we represent the entire community, but when only half of the community is voting for you, it's kind of hard to say that. So um, it kind of balances that. Um, lastly, uh, we had asked the senior uh, analyst for KSV to give us his assessment of what the survey was saying about representation. Um, and he came up with the, interesting, he came up with the same idea. He came up with the same uh, um, uh, result that some kind of a hybrid uh, mix of at-large and, and district um, might be the best way to go. So go to the next slide. So why not a, and we've heard this tonight, why not a seven member board with three from the town, three village, and one at large? And I think Andy touched on a little bit of this at the beginning of the meeting. And so Andy, I'm gonna probably um, repeat a lot of the things you said. We actually explored this concept back in November of 2018 as part of the legal research we were doing um, on board structures and we were looking at even numbered boards at that time. Um, and our uh, attorney said uh, there were no state statutes against even number boards and you could have them but an odd number is implied by the select board statutes um, and that an odd number is a practical requirement. Now, what he's saying, and I haven't had time to verify this with Dan, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit of interpretation here. What he's saying is that there's nothing in the charter right now, if you had an even number board that says, here's how you break a tie, okay? And I, I wanna get a little bit of a practical issue, just, just for consideration about why a tie, it might be a little problematic on the select board or the trustees right now. The select board and the trustees right now are, are putting together budgets for the coming uh, annual meetings. We have about a month and a half to take a multi-million dollar budget that staff prepares for us, discuss it, change it, listen, talk to department heads, warn it publicly, and then put it on a ballot. And it has to be voted to put on a ballot. The select board has to pass it. They have to have a, you know, a majority has to say yes, put it on a ballot. If they, be, that's a very tight window. If they became deadlocked in the middle of that process in a tie with no way of breaking the tie, I. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm baffled, I don't even know what happened. You would miss your window for warning the budget. So you'd have some serious problems there. So I think this is the issue. It's not that we're trying to thwart democracy or stop something from happening, but there are a lot of ramifications from having a, an even number of board that you have to think about. Um, and I think that was one of the issues. So one of the other things that the council advised us is that in communities, as Andy pointed out, where there are even number of boards, typically they have a mayor to break the tie. Um, and so if you think about it, and this is some of the discussion we had, if we had a 3-3-1 three, three, model, you'd have three, who, three people who would have to run an election in the town or whatever district, three who would run in another district, but one person has to run at large. Well, if you're that one person on a seven-member board, that's, that's a kind of an unfair position in, from my per perspective anyway. Uh, you know, what, what does this one person get for having to run a community-wide race? And so we, at the time, debated and, and discussed, well, maybe that person would automatically become chair of the board. Maybe that person would become the spokesperson for the community. Maybe that person would become the liaison between the board and the manager. Well, if you look around Vermont at community, most communities that have mayors, that's what mayors do. That's what mayors are. Now, that was the reason we put the question about mayors on the KSV survey. Um, and I think, as Andy alluded to, the response we got was overwhelmingly negative, and we looked at a lot of the comments associated with the questions, 
And I think there was a lot of misunderstanding about what a mayor is. Uh, some mayors have a lot of power, have a lot of administrative and managerial authority. Um, most mayors, at least in Vermont, are what are called weak mayors. They're really just glorified board members that usually maybe don't even vote uh, on normal board business, but they do vote to break a tie. But I, we could understand people getting uh, 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 upset about and concerned about a mayor, I, considering that the former mayor of Burlington is leading the uh, Iowa caucus right now. Um, so why we made the 223 model temporary instead of saying um, let's, let's make this a permanent model? Well, right now we have estimates of what the populations of the village and the town are. We don't know for sure. We won't know until the 2020 census is out. Um, and so we don't have a permanent, to have a permanent representation model, we would need to or want to start with really accurate counts. Um, and also, as we've said, as a number of people have said, you'd need some mechanism for adjusting the boundaries to uh, a lot for, for population growth. State statute says you can have a, a difference of 10% between one voting district or another. The other issue we had was that we were concerned about, at this stage, institutionalizing a permanent town and village dynamic on the board. Um, some people may think it's necessary, but a lot of people think if we're trying to create a new community with a new outlook, a new perspective, a new understanding of who we are, do we really want to anchor ourselves to the past and say, yeah, we're, we're, we're a new community, but we're still going to have stick with this village town thing and have it incorporated right onto the board? Um, many community members said they very much favored districts, but not village town voting districts. They voted districts, for example, that incorporated the rural area of Essex and maybe incorporated just the more developed part of the village and the suburban area of the, of the town. Maybe you could have districts that would have a little slice of all three. Districting is very complex. There's a lot of different possibilities. Um, and so our idea was, and, and really most communities that do districting, they usually hire a, a third party or appoint some kind of a committee to study districting and really do a good job with it. And so our thought was, if we have a five-member board, I mean a, a seven-member board, and they have a window um, to work in, they can take on that task and really have a good, solid, long, open, transparent community conversation about what kind of uh, districts we want to see here in Essex. Um, and, and I added the last li little bit here, and I'm sorry I ad-libbed uh, a little bit, but I thought that maybe before we had that discussion about what kind of districts we want in Essex, um, maybe we want to put a little bit of the tension of the village town stuff behind us because it can be a politically sensitive issue. So maybe if we had a merger and you have a board that now can sort of draw its breath and take it easy, now they can do a really good thorough job about districting. Um, so go to the next slide. Um, to go to the tax reconciliation piece, so over a 12 year phase in period, the village would be, and, and these, are, these are just technical designations, and I think it's, it's unfortunate. We, you know, this is sort of the legal stuff that we have to do in order to phase in the tax differential between the village and the town. So one of the things we would do is the village for a 12 year period would be designated as a debt assessment district. Um, it would pay off the residual debt that's just unique to the village. So that debt wouldn't be transferred over to the town or to the town general fund. Um, the second piece is the village would be designated as a tax reconciliation district uh, for the same reason of gradually phasing in um, the village's uh, grand list at the, the, for, at the amount that, that at the beginning of the charter, I mean at the, um, at the point of merger, and gradually phasing that amount in over, 20, uh, over 12 years. And the, the estimate right now is somewhere in the vicinity of 23 to 24 dollars if we just did that per year. That would be the transfer to the town outside the village, uh, average home. Um, so the next piece we then looked at, we tried to think of some further ways of further lowering down that, that, that effect of transferring the village's costs into the town. And we looked at what other communities have done, um, and we tried to get some ideas uh, about what we might do here and what might be possible and viable here with the legislature. And one of the things we thought of was that the village could be designated as a sidewalk district. Right now, the village spends a lot of money on sidewalks. Um, it spends about 120000 a year clearing the sidewalks in the wintertime. Town has sidewalks, absolutely, but the town sidewalks are not a, a coherent network. They tend to be in, in developments, and they're not, they're not uh, plowed and maintained in the wintertime as aggressively. So we thought we might be able to make a case for calling the village a sidewalk district for a period of 12 years 
it, where maintenance of the sidewalk would just stay with the village, that cost would not be transferred over to the town. Um, same thing for the village's capital improvement uh, list. Right now, town and village both have lists of streets and other infrastructure repairs that they want to get to. Um, right now, the, we all share the cost of paying for the town's uh, capital repairs, but only the village pays for the cost of, of the village's capital repairs. So we would keep it that way for a little bit longer, and the village would just, for a period of 12 years, just pay its own capital infrastructure costs and not transfer those costs over to the town. Um, lastly, one of the other, other, other things we had in mind was there are several uh, communities that have charters that have designated downtowns. Uh, Bennington was one of the examples we looked at. These are older communities that have little old downtowns that they're trying to revitalize um, as we are doing in Essex Junction. And right now we have a special tax, an economic development tax in the village and that money is used just to improve the village center. Um, and the idea is that we would keep, maybe not the, that entire tax, but we would keep part of that tax in place. It would not be transferred over to the town. It would further reduce the impact of transferring the village's cost into the town and would also ensure that our revitalization efforts in the village continue. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. Boop, 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 boop. Um, some of the other things that we are recommending, first of all, is that we would move from having a voice vote um, to having an Australian ballot for the budget. The budget would be approved by municipal, uh, by an Australian ballot. Um, the annual meeting in March, therefore, that typically happens for the town and for the village, it's in April, uh, that would be an informational meeting. And at the end of the information, uh, an informational meeting, the, the town meeting would be suspended for a month and then you would take it back up in April and we would vote on the, uh, uh, on the same day as the Essex West Westford School District vote. So it would be one, one, one vote, one Australian ballot vote for a school district, elected officials, municipal budget. Um, the name of the new community would be Essex. Uh, the incorporated, the presently incorporated village of Essex Junction would become the unincorporated village of Essex Junction, just as White River Junction is the incorporated village in the town of Hartford. Um, and then I also wanted to address something that wasn't really part of the local governance committee's um, concern, but I did want to mention it because it keeps coming up. Um, we heard in the survey a lot of concern about water and infrastructure and, you know, I don't want to be paying for someone's water bills and their water lines are old and so forth. Water, water, water and sewer bills in the village and the town are paid by, uh, those costs are paid by water bills. They're not paid by municipal taxes. Um, and, and that wouldn't change. Um, the, so sewer line, if you live in the town, and I've heard a number of people say, well, I'm on septic, and I, why would I have to start paying? Well, you wouldn't. You, nothing would change in terms of what we're currently paying for water and sewer costs uh, on either side of the border. And one last point I wanted to make is that the new community would acquire all the assets of, of the existing communities, and one of those assets uh, would be Essex Junction's water treatment plant, which I, I think the trustees are very proud of it. It's a state-of-the-art, extremely well-run, very, very safe uh, uh, facility. Right now, it's owned by the village. It's funded by uh, the tri-town of Williston, Essex Town, and Essex Junction as part of our sewer rates. Um, and that, that water treatment plant would become uh, part of the new community. And uh, with that, I'm going to wrap up. I hope that was quick enough. And uh, thanks. George, thank you so much. Yep. Um, in addition to, to thanking you and for the presentation as well, I also appreciate the full members of the governance subcommittee because clearly without the work of the subcommittee, this would not have happened. So Andy, Max, George, Raj, sincerely thank you for getting this together and yep. all the work you've done. So thank you. Um, at this point, what we would love to do is we have some special guests. We really appreciate you, as uh, has already been said, taking the time to be out here tonight on your normal off night. So thank you. Um, and hoping that you would be willing to introduce yourselves for those who may not know who you are and to let us know what your thoughts are and to what you've just heard. Senator Ash. Good evening, okay. Uh, Tim <laughs> Ash, uh, Senator for Chittenden County, amongst some of my peers here. So thank you, that's a very uh, helpful and comprehensive presentation. Uh, one of the things that would be most helpful for me, and I understand, um, a lot of things are yet to be, the vote has to happen, all these other things. But what, I get the sense that um, there's some concern about 
areas where the legislature may not uh, be willing to approve a charter change if we are presented with one. And I'm hoping that maybe you could flag some of the areas of concern um, because we face charter changes all the time. They're usually very non-controversial once a community has voted for it. What are some of the caution flags this time that make you particularly anxious about how we might dispose of this? Yeah, the, the, uh, if I can, the, the taxing districts, the, the, the taxing, uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure our debt assessment district of keeping the village's debt separate from the rest of the town, I think that's, that's fine. Um, but declaring the village a special district for the purpose of reconciling the, the, tax, the tax rates, sidewalk district, capital district, um, these are a little unusual. But I think that without some way of, of gradually putting these budgets together, um, I, I think would, would face a major hurdle. Um, I don't think what we're asking for is outrageous. Uh, as I understand it, the, our attorney has already met with the tax department, but it really would be with the government ops committee to look at this and, how can I say it, cut us some slack here. I, I don't think it's outrageous. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty solid, and I think our numbers are going to be pretty good, but I think it's a little unusual what we're asking for. If, if I could just follow up quick, is there anything about this merging uh, relating to the taxes that has any effect on the state's revenues? No. Not that I'm aware of. Uh, but one thing it will do, which I would also mention to the legislature, is that right now Global Foundries is in Essex Junction. Mm -hmm. Right now Global Foundries gets two property tax bills. Global Foundries would only get one property tax bill. I would, you might want to mention that to some people. <laughs> it gets a village tax bill and it gets a town tax bill. And all of a sudden, it would only get one tax bill, and that tax bill would probably go down. Okay. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I just want to introduce myself. I'm Senator Ginny Lyons. I live in Williston, and, and uh, I'm very much connected to Essex Junction and Essex, uh, Essex Town itself. So, uh, but. You know, it seems to me that your concerns are probably valid ones, but the way you've explained the transition, uh, particularly for the, the tax district, I think um, is, is very logical. Uh, so if, you're, if you continue to work with the tax department and, as you said, bring information into the GovOps committees, um, I think that I, I certainly will be supporting the work, the good work that you're doing. Thank you. Uh, the, the issue is what the vote will be once the charter is put together and, and each vote that you have um, going forward will be very important. When votes are close, then legislators tend to have their own individual concerns, but I'm sure you've heard that. Yes. But, um, you know, I think for those of us who are familiar with Essex Junction and have uh, represented you, I, I think uh, I look forward to seeing all of this uh, fall together. Thank you for your good work. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Senator Sorokin. <coughs> you did it on microphone. Uh, so I'm Michael Sorokin, and I... Uh, <laughs> So funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a mic right over here, too. Oh. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I uh, raised my family. Uh, TOV, we didn't have that term uh, back then, for 25 years in the town of Essex. And uh, uh, I really want to thank you for taking this on. Uh, I remember 25 years ago or more, my late wife Sally Fox uh, was a representative for 16 years of the, of the town. And I always used to say to her, how does this work between the town and the village? And even though she was a representative, she had a really hard time explaining it to me. Uh, but I think we both realized that there was some value in consolidation and that it should be explored with some level of energy. And I realize it 
in some ways it could be a thankless task, but um, I think it's worth looking at. And I would hope that even though George raises some legitimate concerns that the legislature may have, I think it's generally the way of the legislature if the town and the village vote to govern themselves in such a way, the presumption is and the fault is going to be they're going to try and find a way to accept that. So it's still up to you, obviously, to get it through all the uh, contention, contentiousness that's going on here. But um, I really, it must be countless hours, I can only imagine. Yes. Thank you. Mike, I remember Sally very well, and she was a good friend, and she was a great lady. I'm Debbie Ingram. I'm another one of the senators uh, for the county, um, and I'm very sorry I, w I was late because uh, I was at a another meeting that got to be extremely contentious, and I was so happy to walk down the hall and not hear any shouting or anything going on here. <laughs> it's lovely. Um, so, and really, I, I have um, a lot of praise um, uh, for uh, for the hard work that you've been doing um, to work this out, and you know I would agree that if you if you can come to agreement and if you can um, educate the voters and um, especially given you know the long history of um, kind of going back and forth and you know and, ha and uh, the challenges that you faced over the years um, you know I think that I'd be very happy to support support you and I, I'm, I, I'm sure we could persuade our colleagues at the state level to you know to um, to support you so good good on you for doing um, doing such a good job. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Chris Pearson, uh, another one of your senators. Um, I feel like an old timer here. Uh, 13 years ago, I was in the House and I served on a committee with Debbie Evans and Tim German. Um, and they were, I think, on opposite sides of this issue. So they gave me a little briefing back then and I've been kind of curiously watching uh, from afar. So I'll just echo uh, the colleagues. Thank you for the, the lab laborious task. I'm sure it's often thankless. And um, we look forward to seeing what the community comes up with. I, I, I would tend to agree that it will not be a big issue if, if the community speaks clearly. There's not an impact for uh, the, the Ed Fund in particular for the state. That's what we're always watching. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't let that keep you up at night. You'll have many more details uh, to sweat through. Uh, but I wouldn't say the legislature is one of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Lori Houghton. So I serve in, as a House of Representatives in District 82, which is Essex Junction. Um, I want to uh, just say two things. One is I was a trustee when we started these conversations back in 2000 2013 and quite frankly had to leave the board into last year because of the countless hours that you all are putting into this. So. I know the hard work, whether or not the people in the audience agree or disagree, I think a level of um, respect and thank you has to come forward because I know this is a volunteer job and you're putting your heart and soul in this, so thank you. And I also want to apologize to my colleagues because I meant to send an email today and didn't have time, but George and I have been in contact. I have this, um, some documents that outline everything. I've talked to the chair and the vice chair of the government ops committee in the house I'll be sending them the information. We'll be meeting with Legislative Council. I'll let you know when the meeting is so you can all attend if you'd like to get their feedback on what's been presented tonight as well. So, thank you. Thank you, Lori. Thanks, Lori. <coughs> so I'm Linda Myers from the town outside the village and having served on the select board for 13 years I understand what you all are going through. If I remember correctly, I was on the select board, was it 2007? When was the last time we had the last major vote? Um, and so I remember what happened then. Um, I commend you for what you're doing. I think you've come up with a good plan. Um, I agree with the senators that uh, as long as and I say this because I'm a member of the Appropriations Committee, as long as it doesn't in some way affect the taxes of the state, it should not be a major issue to go through the House Government Operations Committee and then the floor of the House and the Senate. Thank you. 
Um, I'm Bob Bancroft, and I'm sort of a hybrid here. I am not a resident of the, of, the, of the junction, nor of the town at all. I live in Westford, and I represent um, the uh, what I call the rural part of Essex, um, with one little section where you have sidewalks, so I actually can park a car and walk. Um, my comments are, are, are really kind of directed because I was here for the first part of the meeting, and um, what I heard today is very similar to what I hear at the state level, the rural versus the, the urban suburban area, and Reed, Burlington, Chittenden County, I guess you should say. And it's a, it's a real concern. You ask anybody in the Northeast Kingdom how they feel about this kind of union, and, and their concerns are much different than the concerns of the people in, um, in Chittenden County. Um, you know, I, I go back to uh, the school merger, um, and that was a very contentious item in, in um, uh, Westford. There was this concern about not having any control and that our interests wouldn't be cared for. Um, and it, was, it, it divided the town pretty well. And I'm, I still have my crystal ball and it still works a little bit. And looking back, I think if it wasn't for the tax advantages, I don't think the merger would have been approved in Westford. That's, so I, I guess what I'm saying, it's, it comes down to really, I want to reinforce it's a money, a money issue. Um, that's, that's all I'd say. Thank you, Bob. Let's see if I can get that. Uh, Dylan Giambattista here in the village. Um, appreciate the thorough presentation. And I know so much work has gone into this and appreciate the community voice that has been brought here uh, tonight. Um, in the legislature, the matter of disposing of a municipal charter short of a constitutional implication typically is quite quick. Um, and so certainly there's been several conversations I know to get information on that front. Uh, and certainly we will have open lines of communication as everyone has expressed. And I hope that that um, offer is reciprocated and just know that we're happy to be a resource. Um, I do, I, I just can't help but reflect on the comments of Jerry Fox earlier about Essex um, and the community that we're in in the next 20 years or so. Um, your proposal, I think, deals a great deal with uh, the short and midterm, um, and there are many residents thinking about the long term as well. Uh, so I hope and I trust that the viewpoint of that long term consideration of where are we going uh, will be baked into the community discussion. It sounds like it already is, um, but if we think about what's going on with increased regionalization, uh, with the increased demands on uh, both volunteer boards and staff positions, both at the municipal level and state level in government, uh, we are gonna face challenges. We know that we have some tough demographic headwinds. And I think that there's a growing sense and understanding of the urgency of this moment, um, that we have the best structures available to work on these shared challenges and turn them into the next opportunities. So I would encourage you to continue your work. Uh, we have a lot of work to do and you're all doing it. So I appreciate that. Um, and I just hope that as we proceed here, we're cognizant of that um, and that this community process uh, recalls and remembers where we've been and where we're going because we've got a lot of work to do. So thank you for that. Thank you. Hi, Mary Beth Redmond, a representative representing um, Chittenden 8 1 town outside the village. Um, I've, uh, you know, it's been said, I mean, the work, the amount of work done here is, is profound and I'm really grateful for it. I guess the, you know, and my job as with all of my colleagues is to shepherd the voters voice, you know, through the halls of the state house. I mean, that's ultimately, and I'm, I'm prepared to do that. Um, my biggest concern is communication and I am so biased because I am a communications person and I really um, and you all have made amazing efforts to communicate and I feel yet I feel like there is confusion and that's my biggest that's what keeps me up at night is just the fact that um, you know, even sitting here tonight I'm someone who's plugged into this process and there were so many nuances to what you all have come up with that 
in my mind, are really amazing and brilliant, brilliant um, thinking through of things, taxes and sidewalk districts. And I haven't, I wasn't aware of all of that. So really my, kind of where I'm coming at it from is I think figuring out how to really distill this information to folks so that they know the thoughtfulness that has gone into this. Um, that's my biggest concern. I, I am concerned with the confusion that reigns and the lack of understanding um, in the community. And, and I would really underscore what Dylan said. I think it's a really important point. You know, Vermont is, um, it, you know, we have real demographic challenges. We all know that. And I think that communities need to look at how to be creative together, how to really leverage their strengths in order to draw economic opportunities to their communities. I think that's a very, very important thing to be thinking about for all of Vermont, all of Vermont communities as we go forward. And so this feels like an opportunity. Um, it really does. And uh, you know, I will, uh, I am at your service, however I can, be helpful. Um, I appreciate everyone coming out tonight. And I really appreciate the invitation for the whole delegation to be here. I think it just, you know, we all work together really well. And so when we're all on a par with the information, it really adds to our effectiveness. So thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right. Do board members have any questions for our delegation? That they might not have spoken about? Trustees or select board members? Yeah. Okay. Let's well, pardon me? Let's go to the side. Thank you. We thank you for your time. We really want to impress upon you, I think we did, hearing from <laughs> your comments, and we're very grateful for your support of the effort we've made. We just want to impress upon you the amount of due diligence we have done and will continue to do, and we want and by saying that to you, I want to say that to the entire community. We have really been tireless in pursuing this, and we're trying to get it right. So we're really asking everybody's support and understanding as we try to get it right. So thank you so much for being here this evening. Thank you. Can I, can I, can I Andy, make a quick comment? Course. I wanted to follow up on some of what, what Elaine said. And I really, really, really do appreciate you all being here because it, it, uh, your positive responses, your support <clears throat> kind of recharged me with regard to being willing to, to continue to deal with this. And so thank you, thank you for that. That's called electrification. Yes. Andy. Andy just literally brought tears to my eyes because agree like literally Andy just made me cry. Because it's true, it's it's um it's hard to as you must know, right? You must know it at a deeper level, on a higher level, on a bigger level, but a lot of negativity can make you very, very, very tired. Most especially when you're just trying to do your best and be morally sound. And so I'm just taking a long time to echo Andy's gratitude. <laughs> OK. Good job. Of course, Max. And I know that uh, we said that this is your day off, and I understand that <laughs> you actually don't get days off. It's just the legislature's not in session on Mondays. Oh, oh. So. Excuse me. Oh, oh. oh. yeah. <laughs> 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 Five days a week. I, <laughs> I swear okay. to okay. you. I came. I went. I came. <laughs> so, even more so, we really thank you for taking time out of your already extremely busy schedule to come and, and hear this and, and provide your, uh, your input back to us. So, thank you for that. And we are always here for you. If you have questions, if constituents come to you, please come to us and let us know what you're hearing, and we will do the same. We'll keep in touch. And thank you again. We can't tell you how much we appreciate your being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Continue with the agenda for the joint meeting. Is there uh, the public to be heard? Is there anybody who has comments to be heard that are not on the agenda? Hearing none, we'll move on to business item 5B, 
Review and consider approval of draft Essex merger vote 2020 FAQ for use at upcoming public meetings and events. Greg, do you want to kick that off or is there, is there any staff um, prelude to this? Thank you. Uh, so this is something that uh, Angie, the project manager of the governance subcommittee, put together. Um, it, it's, as we often do around this time of year, we put together some FAQs about upcoming issues that the board can talk about at uh, annual meetings. And with merger um, votes scheduled for November 3rd, 2020, and some discussions expected at a town and village meeting, we figured we should put something together. Um, so it's just a short, uh, short document, a um, couple pages, and, and some information that try to answer some of the questions about merger that we've heard. Thank you, Greg. Um, I guess what we can do is, I'm going to do it board by yep, board. Sure. So select board members, do you have any comments or questions about this yeah, FAQ? Uh, it's updated uh, with the changes that I had requested, so I'm good. Okay. Andy, I thought you might have had some questions. Yeah, I, yeah, I do, and I'm, I apologize for not getting my comments in earlier to the, the I know the, the um, governance subcommittee had been asked to put them in early and had a family situation that didn't allow that but uh, at the bottom of the first column the last few words it says and focus groups and I just I, re I remember that KSV uh, often corrected us to say that they weren't really that you know, the formal definition of a focus group wasn't really what they did it was more of a listening session, listening session. so I, I thought it, it may be a small thing but I thought maybe we should change that word to listening session to be more consistent with what the definition of a focus group is um, that was that was one uh, change that I would propose and the other is is related to comments that others have made uh, in, in uh, public public meetings here is that the uh, uh, so at the bottom of the second page where it talks about the uh, cost to the average town property owner be deemed between twenty and thirty dollars a year it, it makes it the way it's written it sounds like it's only twenty or thirty dollars a year but it's twenty and thirty dollar increase every year and um, I think we just need to make that language clearer unless I'm completely under misunderstanding it. No, that's clear. That no, it's, it's the idea is it's, it's, it's uh, incrementally um, increased at 20 to $30. Dollars yeah, but it's, it's, not, it's not clear though that, I mean, I, yeah. I, I could read this to say, yeah, you know, know. It's, it's a 25, you know, $25 increase over 12 years, which is only gonna cost me $300, no big deal. But if you math it out to a $25 increase every year, it's $1,950 yes. over that 12 year period. Right. So I just, I, I just, you know, I, I, I don't want to give fodder to people to, to criticize that piece yep. of it for one. Yep. And just to make it so it's, it's clearer that, you know, and we're not intentionally trying to obfuscate it. I know that, you know, but I, the language that I would like to propose is that the, it should say the tax impact a merger would be spread over 20 years, or over 12 years, sorry, period. <laughs> the annual impact for residents of the town outside the village would be an increase between 20 and $30 each year over that time period. That's, I don't have yeah. So that it's clear that it's an increase every year, not just an additional $25 every year. It's, it's an increase. I think that year. sounds good. Yeah. I, my problem is with the, is with the amount. I mean, we're, if all of the, th everything we put in place, it, it might be much, it could be lower, it could be like more like 17 or $18. Right, right. right. So I know, but it's, it's, yeah. It's, I mean, but, but I think the language is fine. I, I think the language is fine. And I did I send know. this language to, to Greg. Okay. You, yeah. have, you have that, right, Greg? Yes. And, and Anne, I have it sent to. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any other select language. board members with comments on the FAQ? You know, I had sent a handful of comments in, Greg. You have those? I do. I don't have them with me right now. Okay. So we're going to see another version of this? Uh, if, oh. if the boards are comfortable approving it tonight with the changes we've discussed, that's probably the okay. fastest way to start getting it out there. Okay. Yeah, the first session for handing stuff out is tomorrow night. Tomorrow. That's right. You okay. Discuss your changes. We, we, could, we could omit this one if we're not ready, but... Okay. Uh, I'm good with all the changes. Uh, I think Matt. previous practice has been that uh, we would go with the best version we have to date, knowing that as more information comes in to make it more clear, 
that we can then update it so that by the last outreach we'll maybe have the final version but uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't hold off approving it tonight uh, because it's not perfect you're right Max it is some of the things that we have done with the previous FAQs as to why we're doing this uh, the website for instance that, that yeah. does align with our practice I think Annie. 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 I know this whole long this thing long is. Table. Yeah. It's it's really oh, Annie. I'm sorry. I overdid that. Uh, <laughs> all right, I want to do it. My thought is that it would be very confusing to me if I received one version and then my friend had a similar looking but differently worded one. Mm. So I would say with all the things that we are doing to try to be really clear, changing language on a handout that looks the same is probably not a good idea with all that we are working on. What if we have the uh, version at the bottom and the date at which this was done? I think, I, I think we would really be missing an opportunity to if, grow it. if we wait until it's perfect because it will never be perfect. None of them will ever be perfect. Right, except good idea, good shouldn't idea. we, can't we just not change it? Like, can't we just commit to whatever we're going to do, whatever we're going to hand out the first day? Let's just stick it. Um, because I think you want continuous improvement yeah, in and, all, and, all things we do. And, and some of the dollar amounts and things we might, oh. it's not clear well, that, that those are fixed just yet. We're, we, those are, that's the range, but we'd like to narrow that down, so, yeah. Maybe then? And maybe then um, can we make it very, very clear that it's a, am I driving you nuts? No, no. That it's a different, um, that it's a different, uh, like you're like what Max said, yes, the version, but maybe be clear on the headline of it and maybe put some language in it at the top where the headline's going to say version two, version three. This is an ongoing, please look forward to more versions. Craig, I think we could probably version it at the top of the page as opposed to the bottom. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. And, we could probably accommodate that. And then for let sure. it say, please look so that you know when you get this that you might want to go find out what the next the chapter next is or whatever. Right. So, version one, please look forward to ver yes. be like crazily. I'm sorry, I'm really emphatic because I'm really nervous about it. Thanks. Thanks, Annie. <laughs> Thanks. Cool. Yeah. Trustees? I'm good. I would clarify that and just say instead of version number, use a date and reference them to the website we've already got created for the most accurate and up-to-date information. That's an excellent point, Rush. Well done. Yeah. But state it. Pat. Uh, I just had a quick question about the uh, educational tax rate numbers that are in there. Um, where did you guys grab those from? The, I'm sorry, say that again. The tax, the the tax rate. The educational tax rate. I just wanted to make sure it's the most up to date. I, I, without Sarah here, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I believe it is, but we can double check that. Okay. Yeah, we had a presentation with the most like up to date estimates that we have just last Tuesday. Um, so I mean, very very recent. So if it was at any point before that, then it may not be completely accurate. And I think that's going to be pretty important because there's a because of the health insurance increase, there's a pretty substantial jump this year, I think, compared to previous years. So we're going to want to make sure that's just, you know, as accurate as we can make it. Sure, it's for fiscal year 2020, so we're trying to go with the tax rates that are currently in place. Oh, okay. All right, all right. My bad, my bad. Yeah, I was thinking of 2021. I think the trustees are good. Okay. Um, Could you one more comment? Andy. I really appreciate having the two sample tax bills in there. I think it clarifies very, makes it very clear what the differences are in the, in the taxes. Cause thank you for putting that in. Yeah, that was a good touch. Okay. Anybody on the select board have any further comments or questions on the FAQ? Then would one of you be willing to make a motion? I move that the select board approve the draft FAQs with uh, the board edits for use at the upcoming annual meetings, uh, other public outreach meetings, and to update the www.greateressex2020.org website. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? I, yes, I know. 
All those in favor of the uh, FAQs, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Your turn. I'll trustees. make the same motion on behalf of the trustees. Second. Signed by Dan. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Thank you. <laughs> Irene, you had something to say. That is not on the joint meeting. So I'll wait around till after the joint meeting. Yes. Okay. Um, and I'll wait, hold on. Thanks. We, we don't have anything on the select board agenda after this to talk about the charter change petition, Irene. So it's not good. We're going to talk about it again as a board on February 18th, but that, that's something I said. It's not on the agenda. whether those are out or not? Those are not out. I have not had a chance to finish them yet. Okay, thank you. That's all I need to know. Thanks for clarifying. Okay, back to the other agenda. So the next item on the agenda is evaluation of a... Oh, excuse me. Yes. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, you know how the wording is going to be on the warning for the vote in November? Uh, oh, no. The, the, the village... Can we say that generally the village will have to vote to dissolve their charter, and they will also have a separate vote to agree to the merger? And it, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I might be able to. And Andy, uh, we think that's to, we think that's true. Um, we're not positive if we could wrap. Um, you know, it, there's this again. It's, it gets us. It, it'd be great to just have have one community wide vote. Um, and not have it where the village votes to dissolve its own charter and then to accept a new charter because then we get the, the thing, well, the village gets to vote twice and they're really not voting twice. But we don't know if uh, right now, I don't know if I could tell you that we can get around that because you, you do have two municipal charters and I think as far as I know right now, the village would have to separately vote to dissolve their charter and then also vote to accept to you know, approve the new charter. And, and potentially you could have a vote, you could have a majority to dissolve the charter, you could then have not a majority to merge. Yeah. So, you know, I, I guess I just uh, right. want the recognition that there, there, there could be some, yes. some unintended consequences. Yes. And we'll continue to work with our yeah. attorney to figure that out yeah. and the town clerk. Well, yeah, but we're town clerk. So we don't have we one vote anyway uh, to uh, enjoy the merger. Yes or no? Right, you would have one vote for that. The question resides in the village. Right, if the village voted to dissolve its charter, but the overall town village vote was not to approve the new town charter, what's going to happen? So, again, we, yeah, yeah, we're, we'll sweat that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> yeah. We're still many months away, and we still have a great deal of work to continue doing. It's a good question, though. So the next item on the agenda is um, evaluation of a public employee, which requires an executive session. We are going to move that to the end of this um, agenda so that we can continue with item six, consent items. The select board and the trustees each need to approve the minutes. So may I have a motion to put it on the table from the select board? I move uh, approval of the consent agenda with select board comments. Second. Are there any comments or changes to the minutes? Actually, I, I have one. Okay. On, uh, let's see, line 178, um, in the motion, Max made a motion, seconded by Andy Cooper, that the select board, the minutes of the last joint meeting, I think we need to say that the select board approve the minutes. Right? The word approved is yes, just left out there. So. Is that clear? Mm. Any other changes yes. to the, or amendments to the minutes? All those in favor of approving the minutes as amended, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Thank you. And would the trustees like to make a similar motion or one? Yeah, yeah. unless my evil twin was president at that uh, meeting, I either have to, I think I need my name removed from others present. I think I was there mostly as a trustee. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a problem. So, so it sounds like the motion that uh, motion the, to approve the consent agenda with 
want that change that George mentioned. Yep. And is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion on the motion or any concerns from recording secretary? <laughs> All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Thank you. Okay. So we have um, board member comments. Andy, you have a puzzled look on your face. So I'm, I'm just wondering <laughs> when, how we're going to do the sequence. Are we going to go back to the select board agenda before we do executive session, or are we going to come back to that later? What I'd like to recommend is that we move into executive session with the trustees to handle that joint piece of business and exit executive session and reconvene the select board meeting. Does that mean that our recording secretary needs to stay? Or I'm afraid it does. Okay. Then we're having I'm sorry. Okay. I, Kathy, is that okay with you? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and it also means that our friends at Channel 17 will have to stick around as well. Okay. So. Okay. okay. Board member comments? Are we ready? ready. ready. Go. Okay. Select board, would you like to make a motion for the, trust, the select board to enter sure, executive better. session? I move that the select board enter into an executive session to discuss the evaluation of a public employee in accordance with 1 VSA section 313A3 and to include the trustees. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And I'll make a motion for the trustees that the trustees enter into executive session to discuss the evaluation of a public official in accordance with 1 VSA section 313A3 and to include the select board. <laughs> Second. And any further discussion on the motion? Yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 New pills. Thank you. So um, we need to find a private place to meet. I'm <coughs> going to recommend, normally we go to the corner of the cafeteria, but I'm going to recommend that we convene out in the hallway there. Well, if you'd I, like, I, I can try to find a security guard. A, a classroom would be much preferred. A classroom would be much preferred if we can do that. Let me work on it. So we're going to take a moment to um, enter an executive session. Not sure at what point we'll come back. Won't be too terribly long, but we do need to come back. <laughs>